Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Nabi and Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ahabit of Allah A lot of questions come up regarding the, con the issue of uh, polygamy Polygamy in the youth And no doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it mashroor Made it something legislated in the religion of Islam And in fact I would argue that in this day and age, and we find this even amongst a lot of non-Muslim women in a lot of, uh, in various cultures, subcultures, especially here for us in the United States, that you find even non-Muslim women, some of them are willing and readily willing to be in a polygamous situation. But unfortunately, due to the onslaught of feminism, you have some of the uh, many Muslim women, especially in the West, and especially from immigrant communities generally, that are less receptive to polygamy. And that is their choice. However, no doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it mashroor, and it is something which is legislated because it has immense benefits. But however, if not practiced correctly, it can have immense harm and consequences. Some of those consequences that the man who is unjust with his wives, Yom al Qiyamah, will be raised uh, crooked or leaning to one side. And this is what the ulama refer to al jaza min jins al amal. That the reward for something is proportionate or related to it, the deed, commensurate with the deed. So, for example, because this person was unjust or they were crooked in the way they manage their households, then they will be raised crooked. Al Jaza min Jensen Amal. So it's very important as we see there's immense abuse with regards to the concept of polygamy uh, around the world. But especially we have problems in the West due to the affordability. Because often, if sisters want to be maintained, then it is often difficult for a man to be able to uphold financially two households, especially if the women are not working women and do not want to work. So this can be more than a challenge. And some men take on the responsibility, often due to their desires, and have three and four women. And more often, we see in some of the communities that the men take these responsibilities on and or these these men men take these challenges on without the responsibility meaning that they're not taking care of their wives at all their wives are on welfare their wives are on the dole as they say in the UK and so on and so forth this is not what the maqsad of the shara is this is not what the sharia is led you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated this for but rather, that the men are the maintainers and supporters of the women. Now, if a man and a woman, they have some sort of agreement, meaning that the woman, she doesn't need nafaka, she doesn't need maintenance, she has wealth, or she's a working woman, and she doesn't really need much, but she just wants to be married, then they can, she can give up her right for maintenance for a time period or whatever the case may be, whatever the understanding is. As long as there is this understanding and those types of understanding should be made known in the beginning of the contract. So this is not to be a lesson on the ins and outs of polygamy, but it's because there are numerous questions that do come or questions from time to time about the concept of polygamy and sisters entering into polygamous marriages. And one thing I would advise for those sisters that wish to enter into polygamous marriages, especially younger sisters that don't have the experience or maybe are virgins have never been married or whatever the case may be, is one thing that's very important is to look to the suitor, look to how he treats his wife or wives. If you're going to enter into a relationship like this, then there needs to be understanding is it going to be a marriage where the wives can cooperate? That's the most, the best 
when the wives can know each other and they have kindness between one another, can assist one another. But if that's not the case, which is often more the case than not, then there should be an understanding. Can they at least be in the same city? All of those kind of things. But what is very important for sisters entering into those relationships is that they see how the man treats his first wife or wives. How is their relationship? Because often that will be the way in which you will be treated in such a marriage. So for example, if the man is abusive to his first wife, what's to say that he's not going to be abusive if you join him? Even though he's sprung for now, but when he gets, when you guys begin to grow apart or face challenges in your marriage or the love is not the same or you just need some rekindling that you need to know that he's a man who's going to be by you and you guys can grow together. But if you see that he's oppressive towards his first wife, he's speaking about her secrets in the community, he is doing whatever and doing this, then that should be a warning bell that that can easily happen to you. When you begin to not be as appealing to him as you were when you first married. So these are very important things to consider or just some matters to consider when joining a family and increasing one's family or becoming a part of a family. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us all with a class with the bat and bless us all to be just with one another, the men to be just with the women and the women to be just with the men because this is the foundation of the Muslim community. And when there's children involved, you want those children to see and experience justice and have an example of justice, not an example of injustice, injustice and oppression. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.